Churchill from Tim Talk, and today I am with Nora Harrington, who is a Democratic candidate running for the Massachusetts State Senator for Norfolk, Bristol, and Plymouth County for the Democratic primary on September 8th, formerly held by Senator Brian Joyce. The winner will face Jonathan Lott, an independent, on the November 8th general election. All right, thank you for being here. Sure. Hi, Tim. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, Tim. Uh, I live in Milton with my spouse and our two kids. Uh, they are six and seven, and they attend public school in Milton. Um, I'm a businesswoman. I, uh, my partner and I started a business 12 years ago, and I can tell you a little bit more about that a little later. Uh, but I'm originally from New York. I'm from the Bronx. My parents were Irish immigrants, and I grew up in a really diverse blue-collar neighborhood. Um, and thankfully, I, you know, I got a good education, and that really helped me move on in life. And I'm very interested in uh, making sure that all kids get a good education and um, that all families you know, have the supports to move up in life. Nice. Can you tell us if there's a special reason that you're running as a state senator? I don't know if there's a special reason, but I think we need more people from our um, from re the real world. You know, the more people with real world experience, whether that's in the business world or nonprofits, um, from our towns and our communities, to step up every now and then and to run for office and to bring our skills to Beacon Hill. Um, you know, especially those of us who've been in the business world for a long time, we know how to get things done, and we have a sense of urgency. And I think Beacon Hill can use more of that. That's a good point. Can you explain what are the responsibilities of state senator? Sure. Uh, yeah, there's sort of two responsibility, two overall responsibilities I see it. Uh, one is the responsibility to uh, the towns and the constituents in your district. Mm -hmm. So that's to get to know all of the towns and what their needs are and see if there's a way that you can help them on Beacon Hill and of course respond to their requests. Um, and frequently that might mean finding money for a new school building, you know, or finding money for a specific position that the town uh, wants to add. Um, or roads or infrastructure of some kind. So uh, it's really coming to understand well the towns, um, but also understanding the state budget well and knowing where to go look for funding and resources to support your communities. So that's one side of the um, equation. And then the other overall responsibility is to take votes that are going to affect the people on a statewide matter. Mm -hmm. um, so for instance, yesterday or Monday was signed into the law the new pay equity bill, which requires that women are paid the same as men um, in the workplace. So bills like that that are, that are going to affect everybody, it's also the responsibility of the state senators um, to sign those, you know, to vote on those bills, um, to vote for what they believe in and what they think will serve their constituents. What towns is your seat covered? Yeah, it's a big district. Uh, it covers Milton, Randolph, Stoughton, uh, parts of Braintree, uh, all of Canton, all of Avon, and all of West Bridgewater. And then it also covers parts of Easton, Sharon, and East Bridgewater. So it's six full towns and uh, four partial towns. It's big. <laughs> what skills do you think you have that will help Massachusetts? That's a great question. Uh, you know, I'm... Um, I'm very good at working pe with people, and I'm very good at building teams. At the practice, at the business that I helped to build that we started 12 years ago, uh, I'm the COO of this organization. And uh, we started 12 years ago, and there were two of us, and today we have 70 employees and four locations. We're a, a private uh, mental health and um, you know, behavioral health practice. Um, so, and I've been there since the beginning, and I had to put all those operations in place to get us to the point where we have 70 employees, four locations, and we're continuing to grow. So I'm, I think I'm really good at bringing people together and working on, um, you know, making things happen, you know, implementing things, making, making, you know, not just talking about stuff, but actually making things happen. Right. Can you tell us what are your three greatest priorities for Massachusetts? That's a very good question. Uh, as a parent, education is very important to me, and I'm, uh, you know, I really support our public schools. Uh, our public schools serve all our kids. You know, they serve um, all families, including you know, kids with disabilities, kids who might be from lower income families, or even kids who don't have parents who might you know, be able to really advocate for them. So um, the public schools are very important to me, and I want to make sure that our public schools are strong and that all the schools in our district you know, get the appropriate resources. And I know that there is, um, on Beacon Hill now, they're starting to look at the Chapter 70 funding formulas, which funds our schools. So I want to make sure that the schools in our district get what we need to educate our students. Um, so that's probably the first one. Education is very important to me. Uh, number two. 
As an owner of uh, the economy, and specifically, I would say, how small businesses can help the economy. Um, as an owner of a small business, or a, a partner, rather, uh, I helped to create 70 jobs over the last 12 years. You know, and um, small businesses in Massachusetts account for half of all private sector employment. So half of the people in private sector employment are employed by small businesses, and then the other half by corporations. So I think we got to start supporting our small businesses and giving, yeah. you know, giving them, whether it's tax breaks or initiatives, to create more jobs and grow. Um, it not only helps the person who's starting the business, they're creating jobs, they're keeping money in the economy, they might be revitalizing downtowns. So um, that's really important to me, and I think we can do a lot of work towards helping middle class people by um, helping people with small businesses. Uh, and finally, I guess I would say the environment. Uh, you know, unless we have a healthy environment to leave to our kids, you know, nothing else really matters. We got we to leave you all with, um, you know, clean air and clean water. And I know in a lot of towns in the district, environmental issues are a big concern. Um, so I, I guess I want people to know that, uh, again, as a parent, that's very important to me. And yeah. the environment has always been important to me. And um, you know, I will go up to Beacon Hill and advocate advocate for the people in the towns, and sometimes that's advocating against corporate interests that you know want to do things that might not be the best and the healthiest for our people in our towns. All right, what changes would you like to see in Massachusetts if you were elected? That's a very good question as well. Uh, what changes would I like to see? I would like to see um, you know our economy. We are a really high cost state, and it is hard for people okay. to. Um, to stay in Massachusetts sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, people might start out here after college, but frequently uh, college graduates end up moving away because they cannot afford housing uh, in the, you know, in the Boston area where most of the jobs are or within the 495 belt. Um, I think we do need to work on sort of housing affordability and more housing that's afford affordable to all people, working families, you know, kind of workforce housing. Um, that's very important to me. Again, on the economy, for some of our towns that are not as close to Boston, um, you know, helping them with their downtowns and revitalization and bringing some jobs into each community um, is very important to me. Um, and, um, you know, I, I guess right now those are the two top things on the top of my list. All right. Who were some of your role models growing up? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I've been thinking about that since I saw that you were going to ask me that. And, um, you know, I guess I'd honestly have to say two main role models. Uh, one is my mom, and the other mm -hmm. one was a teacher I had, my seventh grade teacher. And uh, my mom, first, I'll talk about her. She's just a very caring individual mm -hmm. um, and really, um, you know, kind of empathizes with people mm -hmm. and can put herself in somebody else's shoes. And I think that's a really good quality when you're doing anything in life, mm -hmm. to be able to understand what somebody else might be going through or yeah. to understand their perspective. Um, so that's, you know, she's, she's still alive. She's 86. And um, she's, we still have a great relationship. We're very close. Um, and then in seventh grade, had a very special teacher. So shout out to all the teachers out there. What a difference you make in kids' lives, right? Um, I had a very special teacher, Mary Scanlon. And, uh, you know, seventh grade middle school is hard for a lot of kids, right? I mean, it's, uh, you know, there can be cliques and there can be people talking about each other and it can be socially a, a difficult time. And um, she was always there for me. And whether it was just chatting after school or, um, you know, I just, I always felt um, cared for by that person at a time in my life that was, that was challenging as it is for a lot of kids. Nice. What are your opinions on the four ballot questions in November? Yeah, we got some, we got some big ones coming up. Uh, there are the increased access to public charter schools initiative, the expanded gaming initiative, the farm animal containment initiative, uh, the marijuana legalization initiative. Okay, I guess we'll start with the charter schools. You know, I know charter schools um, have a purpose, um, and especially in our cities where the schools are really uh, struggling and parents want more of a choice. Uh, however, we're not even at the cap of the number of charter schools that our state is allowed to have. So I'm not sure that it makes sense at this time to raise the cap and allow more charter schools into the state. Um, you know, again, I, I'm really in support of public education because they serve all our kids and all our families. And when a charter school establishes itself in an area, um, they're funded through that school district. 
So uh, the funds for each student in the charter school comes from the school district. And I'm afraid of what that does to our public schools. Um, especially, you know, again, all our public schools are struggling to do better on special ed uh, services. And, um, you know, at this time, I would be against lifting the cap on the charter schools. Okay. Uh, how do you feel about the expanded gaming initiative? I was not a fan of the casinos uh, when they were first proposed years ago under Governor Patrick. And, um, you know, again, I don't know that that's where we should be putting our money in terms of economic development. I'd, you know, Massachusetts, we're a great state for tech and for, uh, you know, biotechnology um, and for pharmaceuticals and mm -hmm. for medicine. Yeah. And um, I, you know, I don't know, I, I don't feel like, uh, casinos are a great are a great way to produce new jobs in Massachusetts. Okay. How do you feel about the farm containment initiative? I'm only honestly really just starting to learn about the farm containment initiative and um, you know anybody who hears the stories of the containment of farm animals uh, would be very upset. It really is very disturbing. Um, so I do uh, and I'm an animal lover you know I'm we're constantly rescuing dogs and cats and that kind of thing. Um, so I would, I would want us to do away with that kind of, the way we, mm -hmm. you know, factory farming. Um, I would be concerned about the increase in food prices, you know, mm -hmm. and what that might do, especially mm -hmm. to lower income people. So, um, you know, at this time, I would say I would have to learn more, and I think we all have to learn more about that. Um, but I would love to see over a period of time as a country that we move further away um, from this sort of uh, large scale mm -hmm. factory farming. Yes. Yeah. How do you feel about the marijuana legalization initiative? Yeah, that's a good question. <sighs> um, I, you know, as a private citizen, like two years ago, had you asked me that question, I probably would have said, sure, you know, um, marijuana might not be any more of a gateway drug than alcohol is, mm -hmm. and, you know, alcohol is legalized, and there are the, um, there are the, uh, you know, the people who say, you know, we'd be able to regulate the product, which is mm -hmm. true. We'd be able to collect taxes, which is true. Um, you know, it might make, you know, it might be better for us as a society. But, you know, we have the experiment in Colorado still going on where they've, mm -hmm. um, decrypt, they've legalized marijuana. And, you know, studies are starting to show that uh, high schoolers there, teenagers, and just young people in general are using pot at a much higher rate than they are here in Massachusetts. Um, and that concerns me, honestly. You know, kids' brains are still developing until you're 21 or 22. You know, it's, uh, you know, our, our, and it's very important that we, um, that we protect our kids so that they can be healthy um, as they grow. So at this time, I think I would want to us to wait longer to see what happens with um, the legalization in Colorado and um, wait you know, to see where we, where we want to go. This is all very new. And we've only just brought in med medical marijuana as well. Mm -hmm. So I think waiting a couple of years to see how that goes in Massachusetts, it's prudent as well. All right. What would you most want voters to know about you? Oh, good question. I guess I want most want voters to know a couple of things. Um, one, as I said, you know, I have a background in the business world. I also worked in the nonprofit world for about 12 years before we started the business. Um, and I worked for social service agencies that worked on things like affordable housing, mm -hmm. um, senior services, uh, domestic violence, and HIV prevention. Um, so I want people to know that, you know, I have a varied background. I have a lot of skills. I know how to lead and to get things done. Um, and I think when you're on Beacon Hill, a lot of the work is about working with colleagues, working with your constituents in the district and the leaders of the towns and of the communities. Um, you know, you can't do anything in isolation. You gotta have that skills, yeah. right? Nobody yeah, does, a, right? Yeah. Maybe unless you're an artist, and that's, that's about it. But otherwise, pretty much every workplace requires that we work together. So I think I'm really good at that. And I think the fact that I helped to build a business from two people to 70 and we're still thriving and growing says that. So that's, that's one thing I want people to know. Um, but the other, I guess I want people to know about my values and um, especially someone who grew up as a child of immigrants and had had the opportunity to move up economically in life. You know, I really believe in equal rights and equal opportunity. Um, I feel like that's the foundation of our country. That's what, you know, we all came here for. It's what our parents and our grandparents came here for and that we have to, um, 
you know, still provide people with opportunity um, and that we have to protect people's rights. So um, I think the values um, that I would bring to Beacon Hill is also very important. Hmm. If anybody wants to know more about their campaign, about your campaign, where would they go? Uh, they would go to electnoraharrington.com. You can also find me on Facebook um, at Nora Harrington for State Senate. Uh, and I hope people will. This is a very important race. It's the first time in 18 years that we've had an open seat. And actually, I don't even think the seat was open before that. It was uh, a challenger. Um, but it's the first time that we have an open seat. There are only two Democratic uh, candidates running in the primary. Uh, and there are no Republicans running this cycle. So uh, there's just, you know, two of us. Um, and, you know, you can learn about each of us and decide where you stand if you're a Democrat. And then one of us will be facing the, the independent candidate in November. Um, and uh, so I hope that people will learn, will choose to learn more about the race. All right. Are there any closing remarks you'd like to add? Sure. Uh, this is a crazy year and a crazy election cycle. And as in November, I think I know everybody's still, um, you know, not maybe not knowing what they're going to do or or uh, disturbed about this particular election cycle. But, you know, I do want to remind people, and I think, Tim, you're a great example of this, that local politics is really important. Mm -hmm. You know, change first happens here in the state. You know, like, let's not you know, what happens in Washington is very, very important, but we also have to, to focus on our own state. And, um, on, and this primary is a weird day. It's Thursday, September 8th, so it's the Thursday after Labor Day. Uh, so, you know, we're kind of afraid that it's not going to get a great turnout. But I hope that, you know, given that we ha everybody has a choice this year um, with an open seat, I hope that people re will really choose to learn about the race and, um, and come out to vote on Thursday, September 8th. All right. Thank you for being here. Okay. Thank you very much, Tim.